Hey pals and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov2 and today we're back on the patch 8.10 test server looking at this beauty here. Uh, well, it's not really a beauty, it's actually pretty ugly, but you know, it's not supposed to look good. It's supposed to fight tanks and that's what it does surprisingly well. This is the Type 61, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I must say I really, really, really like this tank. It's um, basically a bit like the Leopard prototype, only that it trades some of the maneuverability for an a lot better rate of fire and uh, increased DPM, but except for that, the tanks are very, very similar. So we'll quickly compare them. Uh, by the way, I'll try to keep this video a bit shorter than the last few previews because um, just if it's only a tier 9 tank and probably not quite as much people are getting all excited about this vehicle as about the tier 10 vehicles. So um, let's get stuck in. First of all the Type 61 has got 1700 hit points which is a lot. I think that's either the most or one of the highest uh, hit point pools at tier 9. The prototype A has only got 1650 which is 50 less. That's not a lot but you know it's still a difference. Uh, this tank is very light weighing in at only 35 tons which is uh, nearly 5 tons lighter than the prototype A. It also has an a lot weaker engine with only 604 horsepower. That means that the specific power of this vehicle is only 17. I say only because, well, 17 is not bad, but it's not incredibly good either. The prototype A gets nearly a, a specific power of 21, which is just incredible. So the speed and agility of the, these two tanks aren't really all that comparable. Uh, also, this tank gets a slightly underwhelming top speed of 50 per kph or nearly 50. 50, while the prototype A gets 65 which is absolutely amazing. The traverse speed is 42 degrees on the prototype while it's an amazing 48 on the, S and on the Type 61. Now the turret traverse is also an incredible 42 degrees per second on this Japanese tank while it's only 36 on the Leopard. That means that in close quarters combat brawling situations that will give you some added flexibility with the Type 61. Next we'll move on to the armour of these two tanks which is kind of the drawback of both of them. Both have only got 70 and a bit above 50 millimeters at the front, 35 and 60 at the sides and then the prototype A has got 25 and 60 at the rear while this Japanese vehicle has only got 25 and 35 at the rear. Uh, so probably just judging from the stats the prototype A here probably is the better armoured vehicle out of the two of them. The armour isn't looking good at all for this tank because you know the Leopard is infamous for its crappy armour and then this tank comes along and has even worse armour. I'm not quite sure about this gun mantlet here. You might be able to bounce some shots with it. I'm not sure. I haven't been able to test it out but you know nobody will probably aim at the gun mantle. They'll probably just go for your hull and if they can't uh, hit it because you hold down. They'll just go for your massive tumor of a weak spot up here but You've also got a little hatch here, but I couldn't see why anybody would shoot at that if I can go for this thing here Also, you can probably knock out the driver by shooting here. So this tank is incredibly easy to kill now After having talked about the armor we'll move on to the guns which I think is the strongest thing about this new Japanese vehicle. They both use a 105mm uh, modification of the British L7 gun. The Leopard has only got a rate of fire of 5 rounds per minute which for me kind of killed the tank because with my not all that good crew that I had when I first started off driving it and without equipment and stuff that was nearly a 15 second reload in between shots which is just horrible. The 105mm gun of the Japanese tank however gets an amazing 6 rounds per minute. Now this gun is exactly the same gun as is used on the STB-1 and of course we expect it to uh, be downgraded a bit when we move down to tier 9 using the same gun and that is the case because on the STB-1 this gun has get a, got a 7 point something rate of fire and here it's only got a 6 but 6 is still amazing and that's the highest rate of fire of any 105mm gun mounted on a tier 9 tank so that's really really good. The penetration is slightly less than on the German gun however the heat and HE penetration is exactly the same. The 
damage is exactly the same as well. So combined with the um, amazing rate of fire, we expect this tank to have quite a high DPM. And sure enough, if we check, it's got 2,340 damage per minute. That's really good. The Leopard prototype in comparison has only got just short of 2,000. That's nearly a 400 hit point difference. That's a really significant advantage that the Japanese has got above the German. If we compare the accuracy and aiming time, we can see that the accuracy is quite a bit better on the German gun. However, aiming time is exactly the same. Now, this is very interesting because uh, usually we expect all the attributes of a gun to be uh, nerfed slightly when we move down a tier. However, only the rate of fire was decreased. The accuracy and aiming time are exactly the same as on tier 10 and that makes this 105 millimeter gun here to probably one of the strongest guns within the whole tier all in all i probably prefer this gun here over the prototype a's gun however the german gun has got one thing that is better than on the Japanese gun, which is the accuracy. And combined with the fact that these two tanks have got nearly no armor at all, the accuracy is pretty important because what this means basically is that with the prototype A, you can stay behind bushes right at the rear of the battlefield and just snipe enemies from extremely long ranges. You can't do that with a Japanese gun. Here, I would recommend you to go in with a second line of attack hiding behind heavy, uh, more heavily armored tanks of your own team, poking out to take a shot and quickly retreating into cover, letting the heavier tanks soak up the damage for you because you really can't take a beating in this vehicle here. And that is a significant advantage of a German gun, however still I think the Japanese is better. We're still not done yet though because we've still got the view range which is absolutely excellent on both of the tanks 400 meters if we consider that average is 390 at tier 9 and some tanks even have got 380 400 meters is really really good and will give you quite an advantage in tier 9 games as you will be able to spot most tier 10 tanks at equal range as they spot you that's very important and the radios are exactly the same on both of them 750 which is tier 10 average and most tier 9 tanks get the same radios as well so that's good news as for equipment i'd use exactly the same uh, layout as on the stv1 the vertical stabilizer the gun rammer and then for the third piece of equipment you can choose between the coated optics and improved vents coated optics to get the most out of that view range or vents just to improve all your crew skills generally i i'd say if you go for brothers and arms on your crew then i'd go with vents too if not then go with coated optics talking of crew skills I just got repairs on the entire crew because being, sitting trapped in the open with this amount of armor is just deadly. So I got repairs. Uh, repairs. After that, I probably either swapped them all for Brothers and Arms. However, I wouldn't really recommend Brothers and Arms all that much for these new Japanese tanks. Probably rather get um, Six Sense and the Commander. After that, Recon and Situational Awareness then off-road driving and smooth ride for your driver and you also want to have snapshot for your gunner and for your loader you want to have safe storage. So all that said, let's head out to the battlefield and see how this tank performs out there. I've only got one game lined up for you guys today because uh, I just figured that the tier 9 tanks wouldn't be all that interesting and I just wanted to keep this video a bit shorter. Now one thing that I just quickly want to say before we head in is that this tank as the tier 10 tank as well and nearly all Japanese vehicles has got amazing gun depression. You can literally point the gun right down here to the ground. Uh, that gives you significant advantages and I hope that the replay I'm going to show you is absolutely going to showcase that. So let's head in. So here we go, I've spawned on Comorin in the worst possible matchup for this tank probably. Nearly all the game consists of tier 10 tanks except for two tier 9s on each team and I am one of those unlucky ones. Now um, straight away you can see the maneuverability of this vehicle is really good. Uh, it's it's not as good as for example Leopard prototypes maneuverability but still it can really take those corners and as the traverse speed is better on this tank actually than on the prototype it actually maneuvers very very well it feels very responsive now I'm heading out for the left side of the map here and uh, let's see who's with me an object 263 and an E50 uh, let's see, is the, e the E100 doesn't seem to be doing anything at the moment, so we're only three people on this side here. This could become very difficult and tricky. Um, a bat shot is spotted. 
I get one shot into him, nice damage roll there, he gets a shot into me, missing his first shot, and the second shot goes into me, and I have to really get it to cover. The only thing I can do here is drive into the water in order to avoid their shots, that's what I do, and just make it to the other shore before I drown. Uh, the bat shot is there again, and here you will see the good elevation angles of this tank coming into play. Let's see, can we get another shot? Oh, good, okay. Quickly back down before he can return fire. Now, one of the problems here is that when I'm underwater, I can't shoot the bat shot. And I'm on really low health here now, I'm only on 500 and something hit points. And oh, oh, I trapped the bat shot, he hasn't got the gun elevation to shoot me. And uh, he's he's in the water. He's drowning. Oh, that was really that's so good. Uh, good. And can we finish him off? Oh, he's he's still on his tracks. Let's see. And he drowns. I think he drowned. Oh, let's see. Um, yeah, he drowned. So that's really good news for us. We I I basically eliminated a bat shot here by um, coaxing him into the water. Uh, let's see, and here you can see again the superior gun depression. If I was, for example, in a prototype A, there's a good chance that I had to progress a lot higher onto that, this kind of slope here to be able to hit that bat shot. Um, now, I fire off a random shot. Obviously, it doesn't hit because if it would hit and penetrate, uh, I would be able to kill that bat shot with one shot. Here's an object for 30, the new Russian medium tank. I've uploaded a review of that tank yesterday. Um, um, can we get, oh, yes, good, we secure the kill on the bachelor, that's important, now we only have to look after this object 430 still, but he's really giving our object 263 quite a hard time. Now, I decide to come over here to help him out, um, however, then I reconsider and think it's probably better if I go around and get flanking shots of that object, however, I have to be very careful because he can get two shots into me and then I'm dead, and he's got a really mean rate of fire. So, let's see, can we hit him? Ah, oh, no, he gets into cover just before I can pull the trigger. Um, so, we pop back up. Now, he's realized I'm there, and, oh, ah, uh, he gets one shot into me, but I get one shot into him, too. But now, I'm in one shot range of him. That is very dangerous. I have to play really, really carefully here now. Um, let's see, I, I'm just... Basically, I'm hoping that the object, I don't understand why the object 263 isn't taking him out, but artillery is obviously hammering him, so that would explain it. But, um, yeah, basically, I if the object, yeah, now I'm in real big trouble because I cannot really beat this enemy on my own. I snipe his cupola and he donks the shot into the little mound in front of him. Let's see if we can repeat the whole thing again. And no! I was just, I was, I was just literally, I was just, I had just clicked the mouse and then the bat shot artillery got a shot into me and killed me. I can't believe it, but that was such an intense gameplay and I think I did the most I could in that situation. I helped out against the object 430, I basically killed two bat shots and uh yeah I hope that kind of showcased this tank for you and that's see some after game stats shall we? So, considering the matchup we got into, we did fairly well in that game, I must say. We picked up a second class mastery badge, and uh, uh, this is a screenshot, I can't get the mouse over. I think that's a master gunner badge, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, we got 44,500 credits, about, and 7,157 experience. However, that was a times five for the first victory of the day, but still that's pretty good. Um, as you can see, we spotted two bat shots, um, enabled spotting damage to three enemy tanks, um, critted three enemies, and killed one. But we indirectly also um, caused the death of that bat shot. Um, if we sort the team rankings by experience earned, you can see that I got the most experience in our entire team, causing 2,590 damage, followed by the Object 263 and after that the Waffentrager. In the detailed report, we can see that I fired only 10 shots, of which 8 hit, but all 8 penetrated. I did a total of nearly 2,600 damage. I received 5 hits and all 5 penetrated. That again showcases the really bad armor of this vehicle. I received, however, 2,740 potential damage. That means that quite a few of those shots must have hit my tracks. Uh, I spotted two enemies, damaged three, 
and destroyed one and got 600 assistance damage. So, yeah, that was a fairly good game. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it could showcase the tank for you, although it was pretty short. And um, I hope you're looking forward to this tank line coming out soon. I'll also be probably reviewing this tank here, the STA one. And, yeah, all in all, I must say the Type 61 could probably become one of my new favourite tier 9 medium tanks however the one problem with this tank is its lack of armor for example the prototype a still had the speed and power to weight ratio to avoid shots by uh, doing evasive maneuvers but this tank just hasn't got the speed and the power to weight ratio so i just that could be an issue but still i think this tank is really good and definitely one of the highlights of the new japanese tank line and i'm looking forward to it coming out i hope i can give you a good first heads up on this vehicle as already said and um, keep a lookout for the sta1 review coming up and also i will be reviewing the object 430 version 2 the new russian tier 9 medium tank so i hope you enjoyed thanks for watching as usual and i hope i see you in one of my next videos uh bye bye